Approximately 100 kilometres east of Perth, Western Australia, lies the quaint and historic town of York. In fact, it's the oldest inland town in Western Australia. Established in 1831, the town is known for its rich heritage, colonial architecture and outstanding natural beauty. One of the wonderful attractions here at York is the York Motor Museum, where I'm off to meet two legends of WA Speedway, Charlie West and Con Migro. The York Motor Museum attracts in excess of 18,000 visitors a year. Formerly owned by Mr Peter Briggs, this fabulous facility is now owned by the community and managed by Mr Brian Johns on their behalf. The museum boasts a significant selection of early Australian motoring history, a fine collection of classic vintage cars and carriages, historical motorcycles and several extremely valuable race cars. However, the display I have come to see on this occasion is the famous number 26 speed car formerly owned and driven by Charlie West at Claremont Speedway. And the two fellows I've come to interview, Charlie West and Con Migro. Charlie, as you sit here looking at the race car that you made famous at Claremont Speedway all those years ago, what's going through your mind now just uh, looking at the vehicle again? Well, yeah, it is great to see it again and uh, it looks very similar to uh, when I was racing it. And uh, yeah, it uh, brings back great memories. I honestly can't believe that I sat in cars like this without a roll cage or without everything. And uh, in feature races, sometimes I, in a field of 28, 30, um, going from last to first in one lap. It doesn't seem possible, looking at the motor car that I'm sitting next to, that it could do that. Well folks, here's a sight for sore eyes. Charlie West back in the number 26 car. It didn't take much talking into uh, getting you back into the car. Tell us how it feels and what, you, what you're feeling when you're sitting in there. Well, yeah, it feels real good. Um, it was years and years ago since I sat in it, but uh, the memories come back straight away. And uh, it is just a fantastic thing to be sitting in it at the York Museum here. Now this is in the days without the roll cage, you had open uh, face helmets, uh, gas goggles racing around on a, on a dirt track, uh, lighting wasn't as good as it is today. Uh, do you ever question uh, how you ever did it in the first place? Well, the thing is, um, it, you know, like it's, it was at those days um, really pretty hard because you had uh, eight or ten gas goggles on top of one another um, and a lot of the times you with the heat and everything before the race you'd have to be holding them up so they didn't fog up uh, and then with ten of the old gas goggles on top of one another um, they were pretty hard to see through with the lights and everything shining anyway and uh, um, as I never told you before, or Con more than I knew, that I virtually only got one eye. And um, I went to get a cataract done on this one, and Professor Constable used to follow me in racing. And uh, he said, I'll do the other eye. And I said, well, I can't see out of that one anyway. And he said, incredible, incredible. And he, he, uh, he was just, outstanding he couldn't believe uh, that I'd virtually drove all my racing career and uh, motorcycling with virtually one eye. Now you're back in the car without the roll cage on but uh, later in its career you put the roll cage on and I think it was your very first race with the cage on that you finished up about five times end over end and a really big serious crash you may not have been here talking to us, in fact, if you didn't have the cage on. Well, that's right. Um, we, what happened, uh, they brought it in, they were going to bring it in at a certain date, and uh, I said to Vic and um, Bob Goddard, that used to race speed cars, he was a, a very, very good ro uh, driver, and uh, a boilermaker welder. So we put the roll cage on 
for that Friday night. And yeah, as you said, um, coming out of Fowl House, I can't remember really what happened, but I'd done five end for enders and lobbed on one car and everything and just walked away, not a hassle. So we had to rebuild the car and a new, new roll cage for the following week. And we didn't miss the week. It was all uh, painted, chromed and sign written thanks to Ray Long, the sign writer, and uh, ready for the following week. Well, Con Migro uh, brought you back in here. Uh, almost must bring tears to your eyes seeing Charlie back in the famous 26 car here at York Motor Museum. Well, how privileged we are today, or how privileged we are that Peter Briggs, first of all, bought the car and kept it, and kept it in the same livery as what Charlie had it. And to be here today with the great man sitting in the race car, as I said earlier in the, in the interview, he, he's still the same weight as he was when he was racing. And uh, I reckon all we need now is a John Day yet. We can push him off and he can go racing. Well, there we are, folks. Uh, what fun it's been to be with these two legends of uh, Speedway in Western Australia here. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get Charlie out of here, but I'll worry about that. I'm Graeme Sindon. You've been watching Talking About Speedway. See you next time. It gives me great pleasure just to sit here and just dwell on a little bit of the past.